Marketer of the Day, Episode 587, Make Time for What's Important, How to Get Motivated, Stay Organized, Time Block, Prioritize, Amplify Your Productivity, and Hit All Your Goals with Robert Plank. Hey there, it's Robert Plank, and we're back with a solo episode where we're going to talk about how to make time for what's important, how to get motivated, how to stay organized, how to time block, prioritize, amplify your productivity, do all those things that are important. And I'm hoping, I'm assuming that I'm talking to you as an entrepreneur, as an online business owner, as an internet marketer, and you might have stumbled across this podcast and maybe you're neither of those things. Maybe you just found me on iTunes or on Google or on Facebook somewhere and you're just looking to squeeze more time out of the day. So I just want to tell you that I'm talking to entrepreneurs and I might throw out terms like maybe an autoresponder or a CRM system, who knows. But if you're not not an internet marketer, I think this will still apply to you. So keep listening, even if you're not an online business person, but I am. And you know what? We all have tons of stuff going on. I mean, I can't even imagine if you have kids or let's say you're caring for an elderly member of your family or maybe you have multiple jobs. I mean, I can definitely relate to being in the situation at least of being in college, of also having a job, of also getting this internet marketing thing off the ground. And at the moment, I'm a full-time internet marketer. I've been an internet marketer full-time for almost 10 years, and yet I still have different things happening like hobbies, commitments. So, I mean, we're all busy these days, but we all also have the same 24 hours in the day as everyone else. So you got to have a way to make it work and you can't squeeze out more time during the day. You probably can't get any less sleep, but let's think about some of the things that you can control so that way you have more time freed up to maybe make the money, pay off debt, get to retirement faster, and be more energized, focused, and just having more fun with what it is that you're doing. And I think it just might be a matter of you getting more organized and maybe even asking for help or maybe hiring a coach or doing some research. I mean, maybe that's why you're on this podcast right now. You're researching how to be more productive. And I would say that you're on the right track by researching and maybe you're reading, maybe you're checking out some Kindle books. I personally, these last few months, I've really loved the site reddit.com, R-E-D-D-I-T.com. They have an iPhone and a smartphone app and it's been really helpful for me because I stay away from movies and TV as much as I can. Not because those things are bad, but because there are a huge time suck. And one of the best things I ever did, and this might be kind of extreme, but one of the best things I ever did was I got rid of live TV well over a decade ago. And that means that I do keep up to date on things like Netflix shows and Hulu shows. But as far as a lot of the pop culture, a lot of the reality TV, the time wasting, I am not familiar with much of any of that. And the big reason for not having live TV is because it just drains all the remaining time you have in the day. And I am deathly, deathly, deathly afraid of having live TV or going back to it. And I'm afraid of just flipping through channels and getting sucked in on the 500 different channels that are out there and then just surfing from thing to thing, watching half a show here, half a show there, and getting nothing done. I mean, it's bad enough with all the things available on Netflix or Amazon Prime. I think that's bad enough, but to add live TV into the mix, I mean, I, I hope I never go back to it. I, I'd never go back to it if I had the choice. So if you ever look up the difference between people who are frustrated and don't make money versus people who are happy and make a lot of money, one of the biggest correlations is that the people that make money, they read instead of watching TV. And so I bring all this up and I bring things up like podcasting and Reddit because I do sometimes feel bad that I don't read enough because I just don't feel like it. So I have the Kindle app on my phone and on my tablet, and sometimes I'll read some on the computer. And on my phone, I also have the Audible app where for $15 a month, you're given one credit and you can buy one audiobook a month. And 
an audiobook is long enough to, to take you most of the month. An audiobook is 10 to 20 hours. So you'll definitely be busy enough with that. But you know what, to be honest, sometimes I just don't feel like reading. And uh, sometimes I'll jump in and I'll read a page or two of a book that I happen to have sitting out or I'll read pay, a page or two of a Kindle book. But I just don't feel like jumping in. And then I don't feel like uh, going on YouTube because YouTube's another time, time suck and a way to end up watching video after video and not getting much. But then I don't really feel like jumping into an Audible or a Kindle. So I go on Reddit and do some reading and not necessarily about politics, but reading about entrepreneurship or about mindset or just something to stimulate the mind better than just watching TV. They've done studies that show that when you're watching TV, you are less active than when you're sleeping. Because at least when you're sleeping, you're tossing and turning, you're dreaming, but when you're watching TV, you're just sitting there. You're just taking in what's in front of you. You're not really thinking, you're zoning out. And what's even scarier is sometimes people will be snacking in front of the TV and not even realizing it. And then they're gaining weight in addition to not exercising. And to, to be completely honest, uh, us entrepreneurs, self-employed, work at home people probably exercise less than we should. And I make it a point to get up and walk around and I do some running sometimes, but I get make sure to walk around multiple, multiple times throughout the day. And sometimes I'll go on a 30, 60, 90 minute walk just to completely clear my head, to completely reset. And that's what a lot of people do when they go to the movies. Now, movies are a little bit better than TV because with TV, you sit there for 20, 30 minutes, there's commercials being thrown at you, but with a movie, as long as you stay off your phone, you, you sort of reset, don't you? You come out of the movie a different person than when you went in, you change the channel. So sometimes if you're stuck on a problem, if you are just in a weird way of thinking, you go to a movie, you come back out of it and you have reset a little bit. So a little bit of a micro rant there, but I guess the point is that you need to stay off TV as much as possible. And you know, a, a good time hack, a good life hack is to, in this day of DVRs and Netflix and binge watching, maybe only watch TV on the weekends. Don't be one of those Americans that watch TV for three, four, five hours a day. If you ever researched the amount of time the average person wastes on TV every week, it's crazy. It's something like 30, 40, 50 hours. That's a whole other job. So you need to free up time where you can because we're all running out of time. And many times it's just a matter of better habits. And there, there might be even this common sense habits that you've heard of over and over again, but maybe you weren't listening. Maybe you thought that you could somehow handle it. Next thing you know, you're still running out of time. So we mentioned to give up TV or limit TV as much as you can, save it for the weekends. And then other bad habits are having distractions around you. So that means having a your phone on, having the apps going off, having a tab open for email, Facebook. I mean, come on. You know these are bad habits. Another easy bad habit to fix is having a nice quiet area where you can focus on your business. And that means that if you're one of these parents, I mean, who am I to talk? I'm not a parent as we're recording this. If you're one of these parents that let your kids just run in and interrupt you. I mean, I'm definitely not telling you to be mean to your kids, but have at least a few hours out of the day where it's just you. And that might mean if you can get a babysitter and have them take the kids to the park. Or maybe that means that the only way around this is to wake up super duper early before the kids are up or work super duper late after the kids have gone to bed and just have some of that alone quiet time where you're not being interrupted every five or 10 minutes. There are all kinds of studies also that show that it takes at least at least 15 or 20 minutes just to get back into the groove after you've been interrupted. So your kids, the phone ringing, the text messages, the apps, the games, the multitasking, the TV, the Facebook. I mean, it's it's no wonder why so many people are tapped for time and stressed out, despite this being the, the time in history where we have the greatest amount of free time ever. So 
These are all common sense things so far. Cut out those things that are sucking away your time. And let me jump into a couple of must have tools that you might not have considered, or maybe it's just, it's been so long that you forgot that some of these things were available to you. So here's the first thing completely changed my life is having a second monitor for your computer. And I've just, I've never understood people that can completely do all their work and run their whole business from just a laptop. And I'll completely understand if I'm traveling or sometimes I need to focus on just one thing. Programming is great for me on a laptop, but when you are maybe editing web pages, when you are working on a webinar and you're researching in one window and you're typing in another window, it really feels like you have this tunnel vision when you have to flip to a browser and flip back to the PowerPoint. And I know some people say, well, but I have a huge screen and I can have these two windows in front of me, but it's not the same as having two physical monitors. So you can look straight ahead and see what it is that you're working on and look over to the side and maybe you're looking at some sort of reference. I mean, we've heard over and over again when people join our courses, for example, videosalestactics.com is a good one, where we teach people how to stream live on Facebook. And they can show their desktop, they can show their face, they can replay a video, but they stream live on any Facebook wall, page, or group. And they'll say that they like to have our training videos open on screen or monitor number two off to the side and then right in front of them is where they click the buttons and set up the program. So it helps so much to have these two monitors and it's it might even be easier than you thought. First of all, you go on Amazon, you search for, I mean, m computer monitor. And for about $100, you can have a good size, I mean, 20 inch monitor. Uh, I use a, a Samsung brand monitor and I think it literally costs me like $140. So you buy a monitor and it usually comes with what's called an HDMI cable and this cable will plug into the back of your computer. And if you're not a real computer technical person, maybe get someone in your family or I don't know, post on the internet, take a picture of the back of your computer and post on Reddit or uh, call the Geek Squad or something. But you probably have a way, you probably have an extra jack or port, you could say, in the back of your monitor or the back of your computer to have a second monitor. And so my personal setup, I use what's called an Asus all-in-one PC. Jeez, it feels like we're getting into computer stuff now. But I use an Asus all-in-one PC, and it's sort of like a, an iMac, but it's a PC Windows version. So it's a monitor on a stand, and the monitor contains the computer and the USB ports, and you plug in the keyboard and mouse to it. But then I have a second monitor off to the side that plugs into the original computer. And you don't need any extra programs or hardware, nothing fancy. You just get this second monitor, you plug it in with the cable that comes with the monitor, and then you have two screens. And then you might have to make one setting in your computer to say that you want to extend your desktop onto the other screen instead of mirroring it. So that way you have this extra screen real estate. But then I'm telling you, now you have this breathing room. Now you don't have the tunnel vision anymore. You can look over on one screen, have something else on the other screen. And sometimes you can have something open on one screen and then you just leave that there. And then you do a lot of work on, on the other screen. So it's like you can leave one side untouched. And then at least for me, and I, I'm no brain expert here, but it feels like I'm using one part of my brain when I look straight ahead and one part of my brain when I look off to the side. So like I said before, I might be writing on one screen and then researching on the other. And I definitely use two screens to make a PowerPoint presentation. I'll be making my slides and things like that on one screen and then looking on the other one. And I, I can just tell when I'm meeting with a coaching client or we're doing a webinar together or something, I can just tell if someone is stuck on one screen because they're just jammed in and they're trying to switch between windows and remember what was on one to do the other. I'm telling you, second monitor, 
makes such a difference. And by the way, as we're rocking and rolling into this, I have a book out called The Checklist Mindset. You can grab it at checklistmindset.com. And that'll really help you to get more organized and use some of these tools that are that you know are so important to you, like Google Drive, for example, or to use a help desk in your business, or Google Calendar, uh, these things that just help keep you more organized. So checklistmindset.com is that book. I believe it's about $2 on Kindle. And if you want a time management course to give you a kick in the butt, that is timemanagementoncrack.com. So anyway, moving forward, another huge, huge one is called Log Me In, all right? L-O-G-M-E-I-N. This is what's called remote desktop software. What is remote desktop? It means that it's as if remote desktop is as if you're looking over someone's looking over your shoulder on your computer, right? And so that means that you can be out and about on your phone, you click a button or you tap a button, and then through the internet, it's as if you're looking at your computer at home. And you can look at anything, you can click on anything, and you can move your mouse using just your finger on your phone. And this has been so helpful for me because sometimes you just can't do all the things on your phone or on your tablet that you can on your computer. And this includes, there's there's many times when I've given a webinar presentation and our course on webinars is webinarcrusher.com, but I've given a webinar presentation. I've shown my PowerPoint to a group of people live, but then I had to hop on a plane right after. And uh, then when I was at the airport waiting for my plane, I thought, ah, you know, I need to crank out the replay. I need to take the video recording of that PowerPoint webinar presentation and put it online for people to see. But darn it, the video recording's off at my house at home and I'm about to board this flight in 10 minutes. What do I do? Well, I have remote desktop, and this was even close to 10 years ago. I have remote desktoped from my phone and then moved my finger around to act as the mouse pointer and processed a video. Uh, There's also been times when I was out and about and I needed to whip up some graphics, whip up a quick logo, and I just had no way to edit that logo on my phone or on my tablet. By the way, as I'm recording this, there's a rumor that Photoshop is coming soon to iPad, so looking forward to that, but at the time I was doing this, I just, I needed to whip up a quick logo, couldn't do it on the phone, so I dialed up the log me in remote desktop and click, click, and there we go, saved it, uploaded it, did everything I could remotely from my computer. So sometimes I'll, and sometimes I'll even be running something on my computer and have to wait. So haven't you ever had to restart your computer for updates or maybe if you're a little more advanced, you had to process a video and it said, well, 20 minutes until this video is done and you thought, ah, I wanna go for a walk around the block or I need to head somewhere, I need to go to the store, but I need to wait until this video is done. Not anymore. Install Log Me In on your computer. Install Log Me In on your phone. And then you can just dial in remotely to your computer. So next, let's talk about LastPass. So LastPass is a password manager. And if you're still using the same password for everything, if you're still trying to remember all your passwords in your head, if you're writing down passwords, that's really bad because what if someone had that slip of paper with all your passwords? Uh, I've seen people use address books for their passwords. I've seen people lose the address book. Now you don't have any of your passwords. I've seen people use the same password for everything. I've seen people type them all in a Word document and save it. Well, if someone gets a hold of that one Word document, you're really screwed. The solution is to use LastPass. So LastPass is a, it's a, an add-on for your Chrome browser. I like to use Google Chrome. And what that is, is it lets you have a master password. So you remember one password in your head, and then you log in, and then it gives you access in one click to all your other passwords. And then you also can set up something called two-factor authentication to get a little advanced here. 
And that means that when you log into your LastPass, you have to remember your password and then type in a six digit code from your phone to prove it's really you, to prove that someone just didn't get your one password. So LastPass, you log in and then on any of your websites, you can click a button and log in and enter a super long, crazy password with letters and numbers and weird weird uh, characters, digits, and all that, and then just log in without having to have all the usual pitfalls. Next, Google Drive to share your files with people. Anytime that you need to get to a file somewhere else or give it to someone really quick, maybe it's super huge, just use Google Drive. You can right-click, share the file. It's such a time saver. And then also keep in mind to learn a few keyboard shortcuts uh, and so a few off the top of my head, the easy ones are control C is for copying text, control V is for pasting text, but sometimes some other he- shortcuts really help. And so for example, a, a huge one is to, cl- if you have to check a lot of boxes, let's say you use Gmail to manage your email, which I do, and you need to select a lot of checkboxes. You're like, oh, I got 20 things I have to click, 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 click. How about this for a shortcut? You click on the top thing you want to to click on, you hold down the shift key, you go to the bottom of that whole range of checkboxes, you click again and it'll just check all 20 of those checkboxes. Shift click, there you go. And then that leads me to the tool of the day, which is a, an add-on for Chrome. And if I only had one or two browser add-ons for Chrome, one would be LastPass for sure. Another would be something called a permanent clipboard. So a clipboard is like when you can highlight some text, you hit control C, you copy it, you go over somewhere else and you right click and paste, you control V it. And that's what a clipboard is. But sometimes, I mean, but the problem is that you can only store one thing on that clipboard. So sometimes you say, well, I have some special templates or canned responses or phrases or things I tend to paste into my favorite programs or apps or web pages a lot. And you install permanent clipboard for Chrome and you can create all these different sort of pre-written templates and you don't have to necessarily find that Word document or that Google document where you had all these phrases, you just have all these stock templates built into your browser. And so this is great for me. I like to sometimes hire people on a site called Fiverr, that's F-I-V-E-R-R.com. And I use a lot of the same phrases sometimes. And so I just use permanent clipboard to store this. And what's a really interesting thing about this is that a lot of this Google Chrome browser is very web-based, which means that if you've used Google Chrome, maybe you have some bookmarks and things, and then you use Google Chrome on, a, on your laptop or another computer or your tablet, you use the same Google Chrome app and you get access to your same bookmarks. The same way that you can you store your permanent clipboard in one Chrome browser, you can go and use your Chrome browser on your laptop and have access to those same templates. So permanent clipboard for Chrome, that's our tool of the day today. And let's jump into our feature presentation of making the time and on how to get motivated. So here's how you make the time is, Like we said, you wake up an hour earlier or stay up one hour later, but you purposefully, ahead of time, dedicate the time to what you're doing. And I wish I'd known this a long time ago. You always hear about men's school. They say, oh, make time to study. And you know what happened to me? When I was in the band, I was in a school band. I played saxophone from fifth grade to 10th grade. I hated it, but my parents made me do it. And I was good at it. For the only reason that I, when I got home at, I think I got home at maybe 3.30 or something like that, and I had to practice from 3.30 to 4.30 every day. I had to put in a full hour every day, and if I got home at 4, which I did sometimes, if I had to walk home, I had to practice from 4 to 5. So just from putting in the time, I got a lot better. 
And that's the same true with you and your business is if you aren't making the progress that you want to make, well, chances are you haven't done anything in the past one to six months. I know that sounds harsh, but this is such a common thing. If, if you say, you know, I do all these things, but you know, I haven't had the time to finish my book. Well, have you touched it in the past month? Maybe not. Uh, so you need to find the time, at least an hour a day if you can, for those things that are important. And then as far as staying on track, the easiest thing is to rewrite your goals over and over. Just think of four things that you want to accomplish within the next week or two and write them down. And tomorrow, look at that piece of paper, get a new piece of paper, write down those four things and throw out the old piece of paper. You'd be surprised at how well this keeps things in your head and it'll make you feel good to be congruent. You'll feel good by pursuing these goals and if you if you go long enough and you're not knocking out those goals, maybe you need different goals, right? Maybe they need to be simpler or smaller, but if you get to the point where you keep writing your four goals every day, then you'll feel good by pursuing them and you'll feel bad and guilty if you're doing all that time-wasting stuff like watching TV. Again, some TV is good, but be honest with yourself. If you're spending 30 hours a week on TV, maybe it's time to lighten up. And by lighten up, I mean not take it easy, but to be more disciplined and do less TV time. Next, the X factor. So I learned about this a, a few months ago. I didn't invent this, but it's a really cool concept. And just do a, a Google image search for what's called the X Factor. And if you want a template for this, email me at robert at robertplank.com, the X Factor. It means that you have a grid in front of you representing the next 49 days, sort of like a calendar. And then there's one day after the 49th day, the 50th day. And it's a seven by seven grid, all right? So if you can imagine a, a big table with seven rows and seven columns, and at the top of this sheet of paper where you wrote this grid, you write out what activity you'll be doing every day for the next 49 days plus one day at the end. If you got through 49 days, one extra day is not going to be too rough. So some people have used this to quit smoking, to drink 10 cups of water every day, to not contact an ex, to write 500 words of their book. But just imagine if you wrote 500 words today and just focused on today and knocked it out and made a big X in that one small uh, cell in the table, that one little box. So like we said, this grid of seven by seven, 49 days, each box represents one day. So let's say on day one, you say, okay, I'm just going to do one day of this. Cool. Wrote 500 words. I, I crossed out that box. Felt good. Day number two, all right, now I'm still on it. I write a two in the box, I put an X through it. So that's easy for the first few days, but what happens usually after the first few days if you don't make a plan? Well, you fall off of it. But here's what would happen. You look at your your uh, sheet of paper and maybe you pin it to your wall at this point so that way it doesn't get lost in the shuffle of papers on your desk. You're looking at this grid and you see that you've checked off five boxes in a row. And maybe it's a Saturday or maybe it's a Monday and you say, ah, I'm not sure if I'll find the time for it. But if you don't do it today, you're going to have a broken chain in that list of X's. This is called the, the Seinfeld technique, where now you're going to be motivated. You're, it's, it's shifted from at first you, you, your thinking was, all right, I'll just do a couple. Now you're motivated because you don't want to break the chain. That will get you through the middle part. And then when you get to the end, you'll say, oh, I've come so far. I don't want to break the chain now. And then you'll look at it saying, I'm almost near the end. Might as well just push through. So this will help you for those times that you don't feel very motivated. And this all comes down to you don't need some crazy complicated plan, but you do need some plan. You can't just wing it. You need to commit to some of these things you're going to do because, I mean, your excitement's going to come and go. And so when you make a plan ahead of time, you know what you're going to do. And not having a plan is as ridiculous as driving across the country or driving to a strange part of town without having a GPS or a map or without looking at street signs. You're going to drive in circles. You're going to make things way more tougher on yourself than they need to be. So to recap a lot of stuff so far, 
second monitor, log me in remote desktop, LastPass password manager, Google Drive to share files, permanent clipboard to have your templates, rewrite your goals, wake up an hour earlier, the X factor, so cross out an X for every day that you get this thing accomplished, uh, four daily tasks, plan tomorrow today, and it's important to time block and chunk and automate and schedule and use Google Calendar for a lot of this stuff, and that's what we're gonna dive into in these last few minutes as we're winding down. I have eight really important tips or steps, however you wanna look at it, for your motivation. So here's why I'm giving you eight steps, not to overwhelm you or give you too much stuff to do, but to maybe anticipate the struggle you're about to go through, right? Because on some days, maybe technique number one will work. On some days, maybe techniques five and six will work. So I'm gonna just throw out to you a few tools in the toolbox, and maybe you've tried some of these and they work. You need to remember to keep trying these. Maybe you've tried some of these and you didn't stay with it. Maybe you tried some of these and they failed. You need to try other tools in the toolbox, but let me just list some of, let me, let me list them all and then we'll unpack them really quickly, right? Number one, record a podcast episode or a Facebook Live as a sort of talk therapy. Number two, four daily tasks. Do just four of the most important things every day. Number three, accountability partner. Number four, countdown timer. Number five, Camtasia babysitter. Number six, Google Calendar. Number seven, set work hours. Number eight, time blocking, batching, and chunking. And I, I'm almost positive that I've mentioned all these things on a pod on this podcast before, but that might have been three, four, five years ago. And I know that I mentioned a few of these in the Checklist Mindset book, but definitely not all of them. And we all need this reminder. So let me tell you about what will help, what helps me and what will help you to stay motivated and to do those things that are important and to make the time for what's important. First of all, I'm recording a podcast episode right now for you just to get my thoughts figured out. And being able to articulate yourself and speak well is an important skill. This year, I joined a club called Toastmasters where people come and give speeches and move through this course curriculum. And I know it sounds terrible, me describing it, but if you want to be a better presenter in any context, whether that's do better at work and get a raise or if you have dreams of being a motivational speaker or you just want to be a better salesperson or just a better presenter or whatever your reason. I mean, some people join it just for the confidence. So whatever reason, just there's my little plug for Toastmasters there. It's, it's kind of a, a cult in a way where people can't help but recommend it. So uh, when I present things like in a podcast, I'm looking to get my own thoughts straight. And sure, I'll pontificate about things that I can help you with, give you these useful tips and advice, plug my book, checklistmindset.com. But also, it really helps me too. It helps me to figure out my thoughts. It helps me to figure out what I want to say in my marketing emails, in my blog posts, in my webinars. And right now, this is just a podcast episode. I'm recording it right here in a microphone. And a resource I want to throw out to you for that is called Zencaster. Z E N C A S T R. So it's Zencaster without the E dot com. So you can just pull up a web browser and choose your microphone or just use your computer's built in microphone and then talk. And it doesn't require any software. It uses your browser, it stores the recording in the cloud. And I want to thank guest and friend of the show, Paul Miners, for introducing me to this really cool resource. Zencaster.com, you don't even need software to record your podcast anymore. So pretty slick. Uh, and then I don't, and so that's if you don't have any sort of recorder. Uh, and then a, a, a simpler alternative for you is called zoom.us. Jeez, this episode's turned into like the tool recommendation show. Z O O M.us is a service for meeting, but you can just meet with yourself, just have your one, you yourself on there, click the record button, and it gives you a little lower quality recording, but it still records your podcast episode. And then 
what I do sometimes as well is streaming to Facebook Live. So if you get if you have Zoom already and you pay for the webinar package, which I think is like 50 bucks a month maybe, you can click a button and stream to Facebook. So that's a way for you to be on camera and just say the things that you wanted to say while looking at the camera. And that can be that you're dispensing marketing advice, weight loss advice, real estate advice. You're just on camera talking. And I'm sure you've seen people do this. I'm sure you've seen people do this from their smartphone without any software. So speaking things out in some way in the same way that remember on uh, that on Star Trek people the captains would have the captain's log or if you watch the movie The Martian Matt Damon's stuck on Mars and what does he do he's vlogging every day he's getting on camera and reporting what his thoughts are what he's working on what he's thinking just because as silly as it seems having yourself on video and broadcasting helps with that Number two, four daily tasks. We have a planner for this at fourdailytasks.com slash planner. We have a Facebook group for this at fourdailytasks.com slash group. The idea is that you choose the four things that you're going to do today. One thing will take you 15 minutes. The next three things will each take you 40 minutes. Why is it only four tasks? Why isn't it 20 minutes and 10 minutes each? Because it's simple. Because you can keep all this in your head and you're also doing things that are important. So don't make it crazy. Just choose those four most important things and everything else can either be automated, delegated, or just don't freaking matter. Simplify. In the sake of simplifying, we all make things too complicated for ourselves and we hide in the complexity. We say, I've got all these things going on. But do you really, did you really finish a lot of things today or did you just push things forward? Did you just do things that were not important? So by having what's called an accountability partner, you are forced to be honest. You have to explain to someone else what it is you're doing. So you might send a text, make a Skype call or record a YouTube video saying, here are my four things I'm doing, this, this, and this. You don't have to go into too many details, just list what the four things are and then go ahead and do them. And at the end of the day, report back to whoever that person is. It can be me. My email address is robert at robertplank.com. You can post in our group at fordelitask.com slash group. It can be a business partner, spouse, your son, your daughter, your best friend. It just has to be a human, please. Don't send it to your dog. Send it to a real person. At the end of the day, report back on did you do all those four things? Did you do just some, which ones? And if you didn't complete number two or number three, why was that? Did you run out of time? Did you get distracted? Did you do something else? Be honest. And that way you'll know what to do differently. An easy one, countdown timer. Go to google.com, type in countdown space 15 space minutes. Countdown 15 minutes. And this will right there in the Google search page give you a countdown from 15 minutes down to zero seconds and just by having this in front of you it'll force you to get things done so if you have two monitors you can put that countdown clock on the other monitor if you have a phone you can uh, get the countdown on the phone i don't like to use the phone because the phone's too dang distracting there's all the apps notifications and even if i turn off the if i set do not disturb or turn off wi-fi the temptation is still there i personally prefer i don't even know where my phone is right now probably downstairs so i like to keep my phone away from me while i'm getting things done Another easy one is called the Camtasia Babysitter. So I use a program called Camtasia Recorder to record my screen. And you can just record what it is you're doing on your screen. So a free alternative to this is useloom.com, U-S-E-L-O-O-M.com. And you can just record what it is you're doing on your screen. You record, you set up the screen recording and you say, I'm changing the theme to my blog. I'm responding to 10 help desk tickets. I'm cold emailing 10 prospects. And then you just do the thing that you just said you were going to do and you record yourself doing it. Somehow recording yourself gets you to do it. 
Number six, Google Calendar, but don't overuse this one. Google allows you to go to a website at google.com slash calendar. If you have a Gmail account you already have, or a YouTube account, you have access to this, and you can set appointments. And it's great to set appointments with people or to remind yourself to, you know, take the kids to soccer practice, attend a webinar, but you can also set these for yourself. Just set a set an appointment for 10 a.m. saying, I'm going to write 500 pages for my book. And then coming up to it, you see the notification. If you have it hooked into your phone, it, it pops up there. And then you just show up for the appointment you set to yourself. And when you're done, you delete that appointment. But you have to use this sparingly. Okay, you can't load up 20 things on your calendar. You won't do those things. It won't be effective. So set one thing that you've been putting off for an appointment tomorrow and take it seriously. When the alarm, when the appointment goes off, do that thing, delete it, and now that'll set a good habit. Speaking of good habits, set work hours. So you say then 6 a.m. to 8 a.m., those are the hours I'm only working on my business, all right? I'm not changing the kid's diaper. I'm not browsing Facebook. 6 to 8 a.m. is as if I was clocked in at work and my boss was breathing down my neck. So set just even one of those windows or a two-hour window like that per day. Again, don't get crazy. This is about baby steps like Bill Murray and the movie What About Bob? Just set those small work hours and make that consistent progress even if it isn't huge, crazy amounts of progress. And then finally, number eight, as we're winding down here, time blocking. And this relates to everything else we've been talking about. I run this podcast and sometimes I publish three days a week or five days a week, but the secret to that is I schedule ahead of time. I get a lot of interviews knocked out on a single day and then I get it all scheduled because if I had to switch gears and drop everything every single day to go and do some interviews, you would feel like a chore. And likewise with you, I'm sure that there are things that you just don't feel like doing every day, but you'd be fine knocking out a bunch on Monday and just getting it all done ahead of time on a schedule. Maybe it's recording the YouTube videos. Maybe it's contacting those customers, but it's easier to sometimes do 20 of something all at once in maybe a focused 40 minute window than it is to keep doing it five minutes, five minutes every single day. So think about those things where you could batch up or chunk up all of your email responses or your social media maintenance or I don't, I don't know, anything like that, your website maintenance, who knows, but what things can you batch or chunk up? That way you're not always switching gears and you're not always distracted. So let me recap and we'll close this episode up to be motivated. Number one, record a podcast episode or Facebook Live as a sort of talk therapy. Number two, run your four daily tasks. Choose the four most important things to focus on that day, and that way you don't lose your momentum. That way you might just have an easy day, but this way you won't take off weeks and weeks off your business because if you take a break for a month off your business, it's going to be really hard to jump back in. Take a vacation every now and then, sure, while you're on vacation, make sure that you're automating and delegating things that are happening while you're not there. Uh, Like many times, I'll hire someone to edit my podcast episodes. I will get some ads going. I will get my email broadcast to my autoresponder done ahead of time. So do those things on a timer when you won't be around, but make sure you're doing four things a day. To help you with that, have an accountability partner, tell someone what you're doing, and then when it comes crunch time to do it, set up a countdown timer, record your screen if you have to, set a Google Calendar appointment, but don't overuse that, set specific work hours to get the job done, and time block, batch, or chunk those things that you know you need to do. So 
We talked about how to make time for what's important, how to get motivated, stay organized, time block, prioritize, and amplify your productivity. My website is marketerofthedaycom My course is timemanagementoncrack.com. And my book is checklistmindset.com. And by the way, if you need help figuring out WordPress and demystifying your websites, go to wpcrusher.com. That's our course on how to master your WordPress sites, wpcrusher.com. I'm Robert Plank. Have a wonderful day, and thank you. Want to listen to more fantastic marketers of the day? Subscribe to us at marketerofthedaycom slash iTunes and browse past episodes at marketerofthedaycom